Hello out there, how we doing today? It's been way too long since I've uh, done a video, I know that. It's, uh, I, I, su I suck at YouTube. And I got a little disheartened when uh, I, I realized I've got the follower count on because you'd have a, a thousand followers and normally I don't give a crap about numbers, I really, really don't. But it bummed me when they took my monetization away on here. Um, and I thought, well, why bother even producing content if, if nothing happens with it, blah, blah, blah. But uh, at the end of the day, I still try to make it for me. So here we are. I'm rambling, I know. But what I want to talk to you guys about today, and it came up, uh, it's, it comes up routinely, but I was talking to Jen the other day about some things, and an artist friend of ours, and I wanted to do this video because it's a, such a, a common topic. Um, I don't consider myself an artist. Some people might. Uh, everybody's interpretation is a little bit different. Um, I don't consider myself an artist. I, I do produce things from time to time. Uh, I've been known to write some music and things. I, I'm not a, I, very good at drawing and stuff, but I, I can do other things. Um, when people say artist, it's such a broad stroke, and not to be kind of punny there, but it really, really is. Is it a musical artist? Is it someone that, that deals with paints? Is it the way someone, uh, are they an actor maybe? That's their form of artistry. Maybe it's someone who works in different fibers. Maybe it's someone that's a, a chef even. You can put the term, you know, artist into so many different mediums that, that uh, it's kind of uh, mind-blowing if you really stop and think about it. But at the end of the day, too, I think it all is kind of a form of artistry. You know, that's how you are showing your artistic side. For me, I could say it probably is more cooking. When I'm in the kitchen, I'm, I'm making things. It's I take something from nothing, essentially, and I see it in my head, and I come up with an end result. I can't translate that as well from pen to paper or a paintbrush to, to canvas or, or many other mediums. So I, I think art, to just to define it from, from where I'm coming from, is taking something that's in our brain and translating that out into some kind of tangible material. Maybe it is still digital, but you're, you're producing something that others can enjoy. Again, I know it's a very broad term, but coming with that, I think we have this horrible problem as a society, and I don't know if it's just an American thing or, or what, because um, I, I really don't know, but we have such a hard time as a whole embracing artists and, and giving them their due. You know, I, I go to a lot of conventions and things and have for many years now, and not just, you know, comic conventions. There's been the different media conventions, horror conventions, uh, even like craft shows and things like that. I, I've gone to all kind of different things. So I've seen a lot of the same people. You see a lot of the same vendors. And you hear a lot of the same complaints too. And uh, you know, you wouldn't sit firsthand if you've ever tried to sell something. People will come up to you and tell you, well, that's a bit much. You know, my friend John, he could probably do it for like half as much. Well, you know, that's cool. Thanks. I don't care. So either go see John or leave me alone. One of the two. Um... Yeah, we have a bad habit of of telling people that someone else can do it for cheaper. I don't know if that's just people's ways of trying to finagle a deal, or I mean, I feel like I got a booger or something. Forgive me. I don't know what's going on there. It's itching, but I'm not. I'm not going to ignore it anymore. Is it gone? All right, cool. But yeah, we had this horrible problem of of really undervaluing people, and I, I do. I think some of it is just trying to get a better deal on things. You know, if someone's asking twenty dollars for let's say a, a necklace, I don't know. And go, oh, well, I could probably get that for 10 Maybe they really would like it for 20 or they wouldn't be talking about it. But they're just trying to get a deal. Uh, I, I really don't know. But what gets me is the people that will become very defensive after that. You know, because we we're always going to have root customers. We're always going to have people that, that don't uh, know our worth. And it doesn't matter what form you're in. You need to know your worth. And, and some people won't know yours. But... Um, what bugs me is when you tell people a certain price and then they want to just keep going and going and going or telling you how you're wrong or trying to justify it in their head. And ultimately what the person seems to be trying to do is just kind of screw you over. And I think that's what a lot of artists need to understand is they're trying to get over on you and you're gaining nothing from it. Uh, we have this term that we use, in, and it's not just in, in my environments, uh, it's a lot of environments, exposure bucks. And this is when people will offer to give you free exposure for, for goods and services. So say I do 3D printing, for example. I, I, I'm going to show you some examples of things. Now, I don't really do commissions or anything like that. I print for me. There are a few friends of mine that I've, I've done stuff for, and it's usually because I wanted to. I wanted to give them a gift, or I knew they were having trouble building it, so I knew that I could 3D print it and paint it 
probably better than they could find it somewhere else. That's just how I am. But, and I'm, I'm probably going to go off on many, many tangents, so just kind of stick with me. But something like this, this is just a little bust of, of myself, you know. If I put this out on a table and say $20, someone will probably scoff at it. Because they're going to pick it up, they're going to look at it and go, it's just a little piece of plastic of you. So why do I, why, I'm not going to pay $20 for that. But you need to look further than just face value, okay? And there's also such a thing as just everyone's own individual values. For me, I'll look at this, even if I didn't make it and go, that looks a lot like me. I think I want that. Or maybe it's just, I'm one of those weird ones, I'll see something completely off the wall. And I'm like, I need that. I don't know why, but I need that. Um, so... When you look at this, you may not see any worth in it. And that's fine. Perfectly fine. So just keep moving on. You know, don't try to talk me down to a price or tell me how someone could do it, you know, so much cheaper or you don't understand how it costs me money. Because I'll explain it. When you look at this here, you've got to consider that this is 3D printed. All right. And with that in itself, a model had to be created from scratch. They, this, my face didn't exist out there in the real world. So a model had to be created of me. Okay, then you have to take that model and translate it into another software so we can take that same information and translate it so a 3D printer can take it. Then you got a 3D printer and someone flushed a toilet upstairs so it sounds like it's raining down here right now. But then you put it in the 3D printer, that also costs you money. So we're already at, I've had to design something, I've had to import it and convert it, and I'm on a machine that I had to buy. So there's three things right there. Then there's filament that goes into this. Then there's electricity that's being used. There's wear and tear on my machine. This takes several hours to print, okay? So if there's an error anywhere along it, this is all completely scrapped. I have to start over. So there's all those little variables that go into this one little thing. So I can't just be like, oh no, dude, I give you that $5 all day long because it costs me more in time, money, effort, and everything else. So if someone comes to me later on and says, hey, they'll give me $5 and I take it, I'm actually operating at a loss. I know some people are like, well, $5 is better than nothing. Not necessarily, because I've already spent the money, I've already invested it, maybe someone else down the road will take it. If I'm not selling it today, it's not that huge of a deal, perhaps. If I'm struggling, things are going to be different. I'm going to start slashing prices, obviously. But it's not going, it's not really hurting me, and I'm not, I'm not doing myself a favor by discounting prices to somebody when they come up to the booth or, or wherever I'm at, and they're kind of a dick about it. So just keep that in mind. Another one that's I've been meaning to do. I don't have the shirt on actually, but this shirt I will I will uh, put this out here for my friend. Uh, I don't know if you remember corduroy cat from Vine. I'll leave a link down below. But uh, this is a cat. This is a cat. This is a shirt that corduroy cat is a part of and is is helping to push those out there. In the uh, shirt itself here, the the script is Japanese. It says Neko. I think that's how you pronounce it. Is there Neko or Niko? Forgive me. N e k o. Uh, I'm not as proficient on my my Japanese. But basically, it's Japanese for cat. And down here, if you look closely, you'll see there's our buddy Corduroy Cat. So, shout outs to Corduroy Cat, which actually, before I get ahead of myself, that's another thing I want to bring up. You know, a while back, um, I approached the individual behind Corduroy Cat, and I said, hey, uh, you know, he doesn't do this too often. I'll put that out there, too. But I, I just I mentioned the things that I do in the community and, and how I think it, it might kind of help me to have a puppet especially working with kids. So I asked him to do a puppet, and uh, it's been a while now, but I actually got to, to meet old Corduroy Cat and his owner, and they hand-delivered this really cool uh, puppet of Snowcat the Panda. We'll get into the Snowcat name later. But yeah, same same family as old old uh, Corduroy Cat, but this is Snowcat. I bring this guy up, not just to brag, boast, and everything else, but there's a lot of value that goes into this as well. You know, this is all handmade. This is made specifically for me. Uh, it's made by someone who's very, very good at what they do. And the same person that made this is now on Sesame Street. So there's a lot of, of value here that people may not see at face value when they look at it. And they would go, if you know, if I were to throw a price out there, which I'm not, if I were to throw a price out there on this, people will, might scoff at it and go, why are you asking that much? I can go buy a panda puppet anywhere from blah, blah, blah for X amount of dollars. Again, go to that store, go buy it, because you're not going to get this custom Snowcat the Panda Puppet from a guy that's really, really cool, did an amazing corduroy cat on Vine, and he just happens to work for Sesame Street. You're not going to find that anywhere else. All right, let me put him back over here. Let me go back to what I was talking about. Uh, what I was going to talk about, that kind of got me on the clothes, and I went squirrel over here. 
But my buddy Poto, old Kyle, he uh he approached me a while back. I was selling the shirts through Cafe Press. And he started doing some shirts and things, so I, I want to give him the opportunity. I'd rather money go to him than to some company I, I didn't ever see. So he made some merchandise for me. He made some cool shirts, this hat. And these are all things that, yeah, you can probably go into to Walmart, Dollar General, and buy you a shirt for $10. I'm charging you more. Why? Because these shirts are made custom. These shirts have a custom logo on them. Um, these shirts are not being mass produced to keep costs down. There's time that Kyle uh, puts into these. There's time that you know he he's got to ship them and everything else. So there's a lot of extra costs that get tacked on. Now again, sure you can go buy a panty shirt probably anywhere, but there's more to it than that. There's all the things that go into it. Plus you're probably wanting to support somebody. You know, for me usually I reinvest them in either to charity. Or I give them back to people. Whenever I had money in Cafe Press, I would give a shirt away. I, I never made any money off of it. I know for some people that's a stupid, crazy business model, but that's how I am. Um, it's it's important to support our friends, and it's important to support their art. So maybe next time, don't go buy that that ten dollar shirt at Walmart. Go buy that really cool shirt that your friend designed, and go spend another five ten dollars on it. It'll mean the world to them. It really, really will. But one thing I really want to touch on. And she's the main reason that I wanted to do this video today is uh, my friend Gabby. She does this amazing fabric work. And uh, I see her comments, and it's not just hers. I have a lot of friends that do fabric work and other things. But I see a lot of people routinely talking about people lowballing them or not understanding their prices or, you know, wanting them to do all this work and do it all for free up front. No, 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 no to a lot of that stuff. Here's how it should go down in my book. You know what I did when I wanted Gabby to do something for me? I messaged her. I said, hey, I have this project I would like you to take on. Do you have any interest in it? Here is my budget. I gave her a number up front. Now, a lot of people will tell you, no, don't give them a number You know, first. No, give them a number. Give them a number. That way, one, they know you're serious. And two, they can kind of see how serious you are. Uh, and then for me, I, I think the number that I gave her let her also understand that I understand what goes into that. I'm not undervaluing her and her work because I'm coming to you for a reason. I'm coming to you because you're a professional and you're very, very good at what you do. Otherwise, I can get on eBay or Etsy or wherever else and just type in something. No, I went to Gabby because I've seen her work and I've seen the attention to detail and I've seen how much time and effort she puts into it. You know, she has cost up front as well. She's got to buy all, all the yarn that to, to make what I'm about to show you. You know, there's other components on here she had to research and find. Just the time in, in alone and just the researching of things. I know it was staggering for her because I've done a lot of the same work on my projects. And when you see this detail, it'll start making sense to you. But I'll just go ahead and pull it out. I, I messaged her and said, hey, I, I want a doll of me because I'm narcissistic. You know, <laughs> I love me. But uh, I've got a lot of cool things. And I said, I wanted a doll. And I've seen some of the other work she did, so I gave her a number that I thought was very reasonable. And uh, she said she'd be happy to do it. Now, here's the secret, too. Don't be in a rush. Because an artist like Gabby, I understand their processes to an extent. I understand they have multiple things going on in their life. I understand they may have more than one project going on right now. So I want to give her all the time in the world. And I believe I repeatedly told her that, too. Hey, don't, don't rush it. Take your time. I want it to look amazing. I'm trusting you as an artist. And that's what anyone should do when you commission something. Trust that artist. But here's what we came up with. And by we, I mean, I said I would like a doll of me. And she did everything else. So she created this amazing head-to-toe Ghostbuster. Now, it's probably going to be hard to get some of the detail in here. But she even did down to the proton pack, okay? The ribbon cables, the the... I mean, everything, every single thing. Uh, it's, hello, Ricky Bobby. Now, he's probably going to scream when I try to... Yeah, there it is. He likes to scream every time you pick him up. So now I'm going to put you on camera for sneaking in here and acting like I'm torturing you, okay? So say hi to, Oh, you go... What is that? Oh, that's real dramatic. All right. Well, this is Ricky Bobby, and he's a craphead. So I'm going to put him back down there. So now you know what he screams like when it always acts like I'm murdering him. I'm sorry. I'm going on so many different squirrels on this one, but uh, he's distracting. <laughs> as you catch me playing with my doll but she put the radio on here um, I've even got the PKE meter the two different belts I mean it's little things like that the no-ghost patch for a while I was wearing now it's a pin but I had the rainbow no-ghost patch on the other arm 
I mean, the, the detail on this is just unreal. Um, the cool thing is, too, guess what? You can form it and bend it. The arms and stuff bend. Where else are you going to find this? Someone tell me. I'll wait. And you know what else she did? Just to surprise me, I opened the box. Slimer's in there, too. And guess what? He's posable and stuff, too. Like, I still feel like I got such a great value on this. Gabby worked her butt off on this for no telling how long. It was it was a few months before I got it. And I know she was working hard. I have zero doubt about it. But when I got this and I looked at it, I was just so... I'm still blown away by the little details and things that she put into it. The time that... I mean, look, look. I'm even balding in here. Y'all, like, she faded in my, my hair color. Like, I've got a little beard. Like, where else are you going to get that? So... This is the stuff I take into account when I give someone a price or when I see some art at a show and I go, how much you want for that? I'm going to give them their, their face value because they've earned it. They do the work and I feel like I'm getting a steal. You know, when I walk away from a comic convention with an original art piece for 75 bucks, that's a good day. You know, when I go to the mailbox and I have these guys waiting for me from someone who spent so much time and effort and real love making these for me, that's amazing. So support your friends, support arts, get out there. And if you're making stuff, put your stuff out there. Leave comments below. I want to check your stuff out too. Tell me where I can find you and all your amazing art. Can't promise I'll buy anything, but I'll, I'll, you get your word out there. I'll give you some free exposure bucks. But yeah, exposure bucks are bullshit. Don't let anybody pay you an exposure bucks like ever, 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 ever. Get some money. If they want to put your name on a flyer or something too, great. But they got a budget somewhere in there. If they're coming to you, they know that you have some worth or they wouldn't be coming to you. Get paid, all right? Or get something out of it. It doesn't necessarily have to be cash. There's so many things that I've done for others that we've traded values and things, you know? Um, I don't take money from charities and things like that. That's well established. But there's other events that I've worked. I generally don't take money. I'll find a way to do something else. We'll trade something off. Maybe I'm getting free passes for my friends. Maybe uh, I, I'm... I don't know. There's other things that you can get out there uh, besides money, but get something for your worth. Know how much you are worth and get every penny of it. And again, get out there. Support your friends that do amazing artwork like this, okay? And uh, yeah, that's all I got for now. Uh, I love you guys. Miss you guys. I, I don't know when I'll do more videos. I've been kind of in a funk. I'm trying to work my way out of that. So uh, as you can see, I was a little rusty as I was talking all over the place. But until next time, it's your boy Panda, and I miss you guys.